Some good news to report on nearly all fronts. Search patterns have been working really well. This week's Buzzbite report. This week's snapping it off the bottom. Auto chart live. You've got fish doing a number of different things. See a lot of them? Oh, yeah! They are heavy. Look at this guy. How's that? On today's show, the big question is whether or not. This is Angling Buzz TV. I'm Dave Sanda. I'm Troy Linder. And joining us later in the show, our regional BuzzBite reporters with fishing updates from their local waters. In today's show, we're talking about weather, and it's such an important and major factor across the upper Midwest that not only decides what you're going to fish, but where you're going to fish. People ask me, where are you going fishing? Well, a lot of times it depends on the wind. And if it's cloudy and flat calm, maybe I'm going for smallmouth, largemouth top water. The wind picks up, I'm going for muskies or walleyes. And be, being able to adapt is very important. Yeah, sometimes it may seem like I'm being evasive when somebody says, where are you going fishing tomorrow? I'm going to say I'm going to wake up in the morning and see what the weather does because the better I react to the weather, the more fish I'm going to catch. Mm -hmm. Right now, let's take a quick look at how weather affects fishing and what you can do to improve your fishing success. If you don't like the weather, stick around. Conditions are bound to change. In the upper Midwest, getting three or four days of relatively stable weather is about as good as it gets. Sooner or later, a cold front comes rolling across the plains, into the Northwoods, and steamrolls its way across the Great Lakes. In its wake, rain, wind, cloud cover, the barometer, fish mood and fishing conditions are turned topsy-turvy until conditions stabilize. As it does, mysterious things happen. Fish species that were active and aggressive, prowling edges and feeding, now tuck down into corners, cover, or tight to the bottom, laying low as feeding slows substantially, sometimes grinding to a halt. Little by little, the winds shift, the weather warms, and both people and fish begin coming out to play. Fish mobility and aggressiveness increases, eventually reaching a peak. Oh, got that one. Mm. <laughs> Look at that, huh? When you're fishing North Country bass, and you want big ones, that's the kind of stuff that you're looking for. Until once again, the cycle repeats itself, plunging nature into another dip in the roller coaster ride that we refer to as the weather. If you have the luxury to pick your times and places and fish only during stable weather conditions, hey, good for you. You'll find fishing to be relatively easy and consistent. I mean, it's hard to, it's hard to beat this fishing. It's incredible, this is so much fun. But if you're like most weekend warriors, the weather is a crapshoot, and you get whatever Mother Nature tosses your way. Faced with reality, good anglers adjust to weather-related changes in fish position and mood. They fish fast to contact active fish when they're really biting. There we go. And they slow way, way down, adjusting their tactics to tempt finicky bites in key places where fish tend to lay low and ride out the lulls. Boy, you catch fish like that all day long, it's a great day on the water. During the in-between times when conditions are improving, they pick up the pace a bit, adjusting their tactics to fish response. We may not fully understand the elusive combination of factors that trigger weather-related responses in fish, but if we recognize that they do indeed occur, we can adjust accordingly, just like fish do. That's what helps put fish in the boat at times when other folks are simply saying that they're not biting. Fish are always biting, at least a little, if you know where, when, and how to get them. And as you can see, weather is extremely important, especially here again in the upper Midwest. And being able to adapt to that is very, very important. Mother Nature kind of deal, deals you the cards and you have to be able to play those cards effectively. Yeah, so we adapt our tactics, not only to the species, but to their level of aggressiveness. Mm -hmm. And that is often caused by the weather. It's a huge factor. And again, the better you react to it, the more and bigger fish you're going to catch. That's very true. And right now, it's time for our Angling Buzz news for this week. Remember the new Minnesota State Catch and Release Length Records program for flathead catfish, muskies, and lake sturgeon? Well, here's an update. Jacob Robinson of Shakopee Cotton released a catfish that measured 49 inches long with a 32 and a half inch girth. He was fishing with a live bullhead from shore on the Minnesota River. Cindy Pulowski of Frazee 
caught the record lake sturgeon on the Rainy River in Kuchiching County. It measured 62 and 7 eighths inches long with a 29 inch girth. And finally, Andrew Sleep caught a 57 inch muskie from Pelican Lake in Ottertail County. That's almost five feet long, which is pretty amazing. Hey, those are some mighty big fish, aren't they? When we come back, our highlight destination for the week, followed by the first of our BuzzBite reporters in the field with even more big fish as Amy Buzz continues. Lake Vermilion. Explore. Relax. Reconnect. Minnesota's most beautiful lake. Whoa. Get hooked on our trophy wall. That's a beauty. Bass. This is my favorite fish. Musky fish. That's a beauty there. Things to do? You'll never get bored. Rooms with a view? We got them. Lake Vermilion. Four seasons of fun. Because boaters know and follow Minnesota's aquatic invasive species laws, 98% of lakes are not known to have any zebra mussels. 95% are not known to have any kind of invasive animals or plants. Let's keep it this way. Clean aquatic plants and animals from boats, trailers, and equipment. Drain all water from watercraft, including the motor, and keep drain plugs out during transport. Dispose of unused bait properly. Together, we're preventing the spread of aquatic invasive species in Minnesota. Sportfish Michigan is your number one source for top charter captains and fishing guides in Michigan. Our network of professionals are full-time anglers with years of experience providing customers with the best possible fishing trip services. Fish for trout, salmon, steelhead on Lake Michigan or its famous tributary rivers, the Traverse City area's world-class smallmouth bass, walleye fishing on the Detroit River and Saginaw Bay or Northern Michigan spectacular ice fishing. We do it all. Sportfish Michigan. Get out. Get bit. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. And now for the final episode, we're doing something a little bit different for the destination feature. This is about creating your own destination. One of the things that I love to do is shore fish. I've shore fished from everything from bass and big carp all the way down to Florida for giant grouper and sharks. It's, it's a lot of fun. Something I like to do every spring is go wading for steelhead. And I love the feel of the water flowing past my legs and my toes digging down into the gravel. It's really an up close and personal angling experience. And a lot of the waters that like that, you just simply can't put a boat in there to fish. So things like wading, walking the shore, and kayak is pretty much the best and only choice. In fact, let's take a quick look at some kayak fishing opportunities throughout the upper Midwest. Your next great angling destination is likely just down the road. There are many ways to catch fish, simple to sophisticated. How about a lazy day spent along a riverbank, patiently waiting for fish to bite? Contrast that with the high-tech pursuit of tournament angling, using every piece of equipment and every trick in the book to make fish bite. In between lie a wide variety of fishing pursuits, many taking advantage of smaller boats and watercraft, from canoes to car toppers, to sophisticated fishing machines. In recent years, kayaks have exploded in popularity for recreation, sightseeing, and of course, fishing. Today, kayak fishing tournaments often feature hundreds of participants from the heartland to the coast. Kayaks provide easy access to waters with remote or limited access, making them ideal for fishing small lakes, shallow rivers, pits and ponds virtually anywhere. You can drag, tote, or float them for bass, bluegills, trout, and more. But that's not all. Larger big water versions provide angling access to walleye, pike, muskies, even inshore saltwater species. Deluxe kayaks are often pre-rigged with electric trolling motors, rod holders, and more. 
like many versions of well-equipped fishing boats at a fraction of the cost. Others, like the ones we're fishing today, are powered by Armstrong. They're surprisingly light in weight, maneuverable, and really, really easy to fish from. A lot of fun. Look at that, beautiful fish. From urban settings to wilderness waters like this, kayaks allow you to create your own destination and catch fish along the way. That was a lot of fun kayak fishing that day. We caught a lot of fish, nothing really big, but the one thing when you're kayak fishing and sh uh, shore fishing for that is, is you really think about your cast. It's different than being in a big boat. Each cast counts and you're really adapting and it's, it's, a, it's an experience being out there. One thing I noticed when you were setting the hook on one of those bigger bass in the yeah. pads, you're used to being in a boat and using your leverage and doing it. All yeah. you did is every time you set the hook, you just scooted the kayak closer <laughs> That's and closer. True. The yeah, you did pull me in when it was back It like definitely that. was different. Yeah. Hey, right now, let's join the first of our BuzzBite reporters in the field with fishing updates from their local waters. Our first report is from Lake Oahe, Kerry Connell out of Mobridge, South Dakota. Uh, fish is still pretty good uh, around the Mobridge area, around town. Fish is shallow, I don't know if you can see by where we're fishing, but we're fishing right now in about four to seven foot of water. Uh, had a good morning so far. Just actually about done with the walleyes. We'll go out and fish some catfish or crappies later. But yeah, still biting, fish deep and shallow. Real deep fish, 30, 40 feet, live bait rigs. We're still using slow death, uh, night crawler, that's kind of my mainstay. People catching them on spinners and crawlers. Crankbaiters not doing as well, but you can probably catch some if you're knowledgeable at it. Uh, things have been pretty well out here on Lake Hawaii. As you can see, here's the first proof in the pudding right there this morning, folks. Have a good day. Next, let's join Brad Durick along the Minnesota North Dakota border where he's fishing the Red River for giant catfish. There's been a lot going on up here on the Red River. Big rains of a couple weeks ago have brought the river levels up to just magical levels for a good fish bite. Now as everything settles in, the post spawn is over, the fish are settling into a summer pattern, and lots of big fish in the system. The fish are gonna be hungry and ready to bite. The best locations to be looking at are heads of holes or the outside bends where the water gets a little bit faster. Consider using your hummingbird electronics to find your fish at the heads of the holes. Sometimes they may move back into the middle or the back of the holes. That's where the electronics come into play. But as far as bait, gold eye and sucker has been the answer, but I gotta say over the past few days, I've been walking the banks, checking out some different things and finding a lot of baby frogs. And that's a sure indicator that frog is gonna be the bait of choice. Keep that in mind, because sometimes if it's not a frog, you're not getting a bite when that happens. Lots of great things happening up here on the Red in the time to come. August is going to be a great month for big fish. Coming up after this break, more reports as Angling Buzz continues. I could not imagine my life without Max. He's someone I can count on. Through the good and the bad. <laughs> my loyal friend. He greets me when I get home, keeps me company on the road. He's always there for me and our kids. Max, he's not just any pet, he's family. Mills Fleet Farm, serving men's best friend since 1955. Did you know that seafoam is more than just a great fuel stabilizer? It's also a high temp lubricant that protects the inside of your engine during storage. If fogging engines isn't your thing, here's an easy way to lubricate your outboard's intake and cylinders with seafoam. When ready to store your boat, start with a low tank of fuel. Then add at least one ounce of seafoam for each gallon of gas the tank holds. This tank holds 45 gallons. 
So I'm going to add three cans of seafoam. With a high concentration of seafoam in the fuel, run the engine until seafoam is working its way through the engine. Then just shut it off. When you fill up later, the seafoam in the tank is ready to stabilize fuel during the storage period. That's it. Remember that seafoam in your fuel is always cleaning, lubricating, and protecting your entire fuel system. Hey, we're back. Let's join Tony Roach on Lake Mille Lacs here in Minnesota doing a double whammy on smallmouth bass and walleyes. There he is. Oh, not a bad fish. You know, pretty typical of what happens this time of year with flat, calm water, hot temperatures, big bug hatches still occurring. You know, it's, we've had all sorts of fronts and rain. You know, this morning I started out, I was using a drop shot, tubes out in deep water, really finesse fishing. Lo and behold, by this afternoon, wind lays down, we're getting them on top water, it's been great. Not too bad a smallie. You really gotta be able to adapt to a changing bite, not if you're, not just if you're fishing smallies, but walleyes as well. You know, the live bait bite's starting to die. Uh, as soon as that wind dies down, I quickly go to pulling crankbaits, whether it's lead core, pulling shad wraps, or even just open water trolling with boards. But you've really gotta be able to change and quickly change and adapt to what the fish are doing. Our next report is from Andy Walls in the Lake Winnebagoshish area with largemouth bass. We're up here in the Winnie region catching largemouth bass. The shallow bite is going great. Ellie's been catching a ton of these things today. They're in the pads, in the reeds, on the docks. Anything shallow cover right now is going well. We had a ton of rain come into the system here uh, the last couple weeks, so the water's high. These fish are moving shallow for feeding opportunities. It's a great time to get out there and catch some. Um, and it's an often overlooked species up here. Uh, there, there's good pan fishing, good walleye fishing, pike fishing, and we have great bass fishing as well. The Winnie region's more known for the largemouth, but we do have smallmouths too. Stop on up here, make sure not to forget about these beautiful fish. They fight great, and, and they're an awesome time. Next, we're gonna head on up to Lake Vermilion where Luke Gronestrand is gonna help us dial in a big musky bite. Our fishing's been pretty good. Our summer peak bite is almost upon us, and that means bucktail time. And uh, I'm going to show you guys a couple of my favorites here. This is uh, Musky Frenzy's Triple Bladed Apache, Ghost Pill 7, a Shumway Flasher, and a Junior Cowgirl. And uh, one tip for being successful on an outing up here is you really do have to carry a lot of these in a wide variety of colors. It seems like blade size and uh, lure size, lure color, and uh, retrieve speed can make a big difference every day and it changes up so you have to try new things every day. Our structures are wide open right now. Seems like there's a lot of fish on the island, a lot of fish on the shallow rocks, and uh, fish are really starting to show up in the weeds as well. So hopefully these tips kind of point you in the right direction and make your next outing on Lake Vermilion successful. And up next we join Nick Nault with some salmon fishing out of Sturgeon Bay in Wisconsin. A lot of changes this past week. Uh, surface temps have dropped quite a bit. We had a lot of south wind that pushed a lot of the warm water out and brought up a lot of that cold water. Best ways of catching these fish have been on the dipsy divers, running them out 70 to 100 feet. Downriggers have been pretty good too, running a really long lead on those, and then but not putting them down very far. 30 to 50 feet is about as deep as you want to go right now with the cold water. Lead core running seven to 10 colors has also been very, very good uh, because it gets it farther away from the boat. Uh, we're still running the chrome and white uh, blades with the mistake green howie fly has been very good. The double aqua howie fly has been also very good. And uh, put, put one of those baits on, uh, on your dipsies and your lead cores and downriggers and you'll have a successful day on Lake Michigan. And for our final report, we head over to see Ben Wolf in Michigan. It's been windy so far here in July, and these winds, often associated with August, have come early this year. But anglers that have been willing to get out and fish in the wind and done so safely have been rewarded handsomely. When it's windy, a spinnerbait is a great way to target both largemouth and smallmouth bass on isolated structure, windy blown points, and flats. The musky fishing on Lake St. Clair is red hot right now, and anglers that are both trolling as well as casting have been doing extremely well catching some very, very nice large fish. In northern Michigan, out of ports like Frankfurt, Manistee, and Traverse City, king salmon are being caught as well as the occasional steelhead and brown trout. 
trolling with spoons and meat rigs continue to be the primary baits when fished adjacent to the thermocline. Early morning has been the best at targeting the kings, but the afternoon bite has been surprisingly good. For more information, or if you're looking for a captain or guide in the state of Michigan, please give Sportfish Michigan a call or check us out on the web, sportfishmichigan.com. And that's it for our reports this week. We also have reports on the website, anglingbuzz.com. And coming up after this commercial break, our cool product segment, followed by the technique of the week. Lake Winnebagoshish, Big Winnie. Let's go back in time to a real up north vacation spot, a place where memories are made. Big Winnie is situated in the Chippewa National Forest and gateway to some of Minnesota's finest trophy walleye, pike, perch, untapped bass, and musky fishing. It's the perfect place for family and friends when you really want to get away. Go to lakewinnie.net to find our little piece of heaven. High-tech construction, building with old world craftsmanship. Pride and passion, the same qualities that define high-tech construction go into every project we build. With meticulous attention to detail, our experienced tradesmen bring your floor plan to life. Our unwavering customer service results in a truly satisfying building experience. High-tech construction, where technology meets old world craftsmanship. Running in rough water can be a pain, literally. Hey, I never knew how comfortable a ride could be until I added smooth moves to my boat. It's four spring design with hydraulic shock can smooth even the roughest of rides. With the built-in slide and swivel, you maintain all the function of your existing seat. A turn of the handle, adjust for conditions and passenger weight. Hey, it's easy to install and built to last. Smooth moves, your back will thank you. I know mine does. And now it's time for our final cool product segment this season, brought to you by Mills Fleet Farm. Today's show is about weather, so we definitely want to talk about a uh, rain suit right here. This is from Frog Talk. This is their all sport combo. And the one thing with the summer months in the upper Midwest, it can get pretty hot and humid and raining. And some of the heavier rain gear that you may have might be too warm for the summer. This is really nice. I've used this. It's lightweight. It's easy to store and it retails really nice. It retails right around 40 bucks. This is from Frog Talks. There's other brands at Mills Fleet Farm. This is one you can check out along with others. And for the kayak piece you saw, I was throwing right here. I was throwing this, the largemouth uh, Terminator Walking Frog. This thing is really nice. Fleet Farm has a variety of topwater hollow frogs as well as this Terminator. This is new. This is just released at ICAST. This is a popping frog, a little bit different different nose in this thing, a little bit scoop, a scoop nose to spit water. There's also good ones from Spro, Snag Proof, and the old school Scum Frog. I used this a long time ago. This is an old favorite. These are great for summertime fishing for largemouth. And when it comes to throwing lures like this, St. Croix makes some incredible rods. This is one example. This is the Mojo Bass series from St. Croix. This happens to be the six foot, eight inch medium heavy rod. And this is a nice sort of all around bass rod. I think it retails around like 120 bucks. And for St. Croix rods, that's pretty good. And this thing, you can, you can probably throw these frogs, you know, for heavy flipping wood, deep weeds. This is really nice, a really nice choice. There's a, a big rod selection at Mills Fleet Farm. And this is one you want to check out. And again, getting back to the weather in the summer months, you definitely need a nice uh, Cobra Marine radio or something similar to this in your boat for safety. And this has a nice bright screen. Again, it floats. It also is connected to the NOAA weather system. So you get severe weather updates and weather information available on this and weather alerts, which is extremely important, especially if you're on big water. Again, all these products are available at your local Mills Fleet Farm store. They're also available online at fleetfarm.com. And for our final product right here, the Smooth Moves Ultra. This is an absolute back saver. I had a ruptured disc a number of years ago, and this thing has been a savior. 
It rotates 360 degrees, which is very important. It also slides forward and back. It has four springs as well as a hydraulic shock that adjust as you're going up through the waves. You can move the tension from 100 pounds all the way up to 300 pounds. It also mounts really easily. With simple hand tools, you can put it in a, just about any boat. This is from Smooth Moves. And right now, it's time for our technique of the week. One of the favorite ways that I like to catch bass during the summer, frog fishing. In lakes with lots of heavy cover like lily pads, coontail mats, or wild rice, few baits work as well as a frog for extracting big bass out of the junk. Why? Well, for one, you can cover lots of water. The bait skips over the thickest mats and you can pause it in open pockets without it sinking down in. The best frog baits are hollow bodied with two hooks hugging each side pointing up keeping it virtually weedless even if it lands on its back. The rubber legs give it lifelike action even during the pause. When the bass hit it, it collapses the body of the bait, exposing the hooks to drive home. Which brings me to an important part of this tactic. This is not something you do with wimpy gear. This is thick cover, and when the bass strikes, you need the right stuff to set the hooks and power drive them up and out of there. My recommendation is a good size bait casting reel with a 7.3 gear ratio, spooled up with at least 65 pound braid on a seven to seven and a half foot heavy action rod. The hardest part of frog fishing is not setting the hook too fast. Oftentimes the bass explodes and they miss the bait. If you set the hook there and then it just comes flying back at you. Whereas if you resist that temptation of pulling the bait away, they'll often take another shot at it. By waiting that half second until you feel the fish, you'll greatly increase the number of hookups. Hey, that's just about all for today's show. But before we go, Troy and I headed across the street to our local fleet farm here in Baxter, Minnesota, where we have a drawing to do. Yes, we're here with Tom Martin, the store manager here at our local Mills Fleet Farm. In the envelope, he has the winner from uh, thousands of entrants across the Mills Fleet Farm stores in the upper Midwest. They're gonna win a $500 Mills Fleet Farm gift card a great weekend at Madden's Resort, a $500 tackle pack from Rapala, hand-selected by me for them specifically where they fish and what they fish for, as well as a two-day guided trip with me here in the Brainerd Lakes area. And the winner is, drum roll. The winner is Doug Floro from Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Congratulations, congratulations. Doug. Yes, congratulations, Doug. That about wraps things up for our TV season this summer. We'll be back again with Angling Buzz TV in the springtime. In the meantime, though, you can check us out on the web at anglingbuzz.com, see what our buzzbite reporters in the field have to say. And as I always like to say, they're going to help you put more big fish in the boat, on shore, or on the ice in the months ahead. This week's buzzbite report. Charlie Moore. Brian Rolstone. Lee Talkin here. Brad Durick up here on the Red River. The Muskegon River. Leech Lake. Devil's Lake. Beautiful Lake Vermillion. Black. Top water's been really, really fun. Go to the plastics. Bass like this. A lot of wallies like that. Madison, Wisconsin. Good luck, everybody. Have fun. We'll see you next time.